This is Twit. I guess in in a roundabout sort of way, this kind of reminds me of a story we talked about not too long ago where um, where technology was helping blind people see a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. this is this is kind of a little different, um, but along the same lines, technology making it possible for a paralyzed man in this case in a locked in state to communicate. And I guess I hadn't heard that terminology before, like what is a oh, locked, in locked in state? But that's really, that's where, you know, you are so incredibly paralyzed that like you can literally not move a single anything. Like you can't even move your eyeballs. That's how paralyzed you are. And to, God, I just think about like living life in that state, you know, your, your brain, you are aware, your brain is fully functioning and everything, but all you can do is be still and you can't move a single muscle. It just sounds terrifying and and horrible. Yeah. I, I, I certainly don't want to, in saying this, I, I don't think it does, but just putting it out there, I don't want to lessen the, um, the, the fear of it. I think this adds to it. That is genuinely like one of my, I I remember reading about locked in syndrome and to this day, there are days where that's just in the back of my mind. Like if I have a fear that just has stayed with me forever, it would be this. So I can't imagine what that would be like experiencing that. It just, it's terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying for sure. Well, the New York times has a story about a biomedical engineer named Ujwal Chaudhry, um, I might be mispronouncing your name. I'm sorry. Uh, He has a study that just published this week that demonstrates uh, some pretty interesting stuff. He worked with a patient suffering from uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. There we go. I knew the first word was going to trip me up, which is basically a deterioration of the brain cells that handle motion of the body, right? So that's the, the paralysis part. Um, With that, the man could not move at all. Like I said, couldn't even move his eyeballs eventually, completely Mm -hmm. locked in. Uh, Chaudhry worked with the man um, at one time during his work uh, with this man, or at one time in this man's life before he became completely locked in. He was able to move his eyeball in a way that he could communicate simple yes and no answers to his family, right? Well, at a certain point, that began to deteriorate even more, and the family recognized this. And so they reached out to Dr. Chowdhury and Dr. Birnbaumer, who is a brain-computer interface tech uh, pioneer. They basically said, hey, we're going to lose contact or communication uh, with him. Is there a way to create an alternate communication system so that we can still communicate with him once he loses movement in his eyeballs? Um, and you know, apparently by the way, the man did give his approval for his work so he could still kind of, you know, have agency over the decisions. That's, so that's nice, good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I just thought the whole process was cool. So I'll just kind of read, read through some of what they did to kind of get to where they got their, their work involved placing two implants in the brain on directly on those parts of the brain that involve body movement. And then the man was asked for months to begin with to imagine moving parts of his body. And they were doing this to see if by imagining moving those body parts, it would stimulate a reliable brain signal, Mm -hmm. right? Apparently, after months of doing that, it it didn't really work. So they back to the drawing board. The second step was to play a sound. Uh, or And so the sound would either be a high note that represented yes mm-hmm. and a low note that represented no. And those were the target notes, essentially. And then over time, the man would work on uh, on I, somehow thinking through this to generate the tone in response. So he could basically... Um, think enough to create a tone through the system that they created. And if that tone wasn't quite on the same pitch as a yes or no, he could like detune it up to say yes or down Ah. to say no. Once he matched, then they would know that was his answer, right? Yes or no uh, to get a match. And, And eventually they were able to do this where he was consistently, it was consistent, right? Consistent outcome. So he was able essentially through that to communicate um, and he said later that he, what he was doing to make that happen, how he best described it is he was imagining his eye movement was creating this pitch change, which is just That's so crazy. Cool. Like, I don't even understand how, how you, you create systems that do this, wow. but it's so cool that you can. So eventually the system, uh, broadened out 
and they created groupings of letters that they put into five different color buckets. So they might have five colors, right? And the alphabet has a certain number of letters in red and a certain number of letters, you know, A through E in red, oh, uh, D yeah. through whatever in blue or mm -hmm. whatever. So they grouped them. And then each, and then uh, through the system, they would say red and they would wait. And, you know, would it, uh, would he say yes or no? And so if he says yes to red, then it's like A, no. B, no. C, yes. Okay, so his first letter is C. And they would, you know, wow. they would, and so eventually they created this system and it was slow. I think it was like one letter per minute, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, not 100% consistent. But at a certain point, they got to a point to where these sentences were starting to make a whole lot of sense, right? I think his first sentence was, after, so there was one day where they realized they had the breakthrough and that it was working. The second day they asked, they asked him to write out a sentence and he said, first, I would like to thank Niles and his Berm Bomber, which is, I mean, it, which kind of makes sense. It makes sense enough. Dr. Berm Bomber is the doctor, you know, so there, there was some lost in translation there, but you understand what he's saying. Uh, he also said mom head massage. So he wanted a head <laughs> massage, right? Uh, he says, everyone must use gel on my eyes more often. Oh. So now he's starting to get to oh a point to where like, even though he's like locked in and can't communicate, he's able to tell them like what his this needs what are. Need. Like it gives me goosebumps thinking about <gasps> oh, it. Man, another, <laughs> another one, a craving, he said goulash soup uh, and sweet pea soup. So apparently he was having a craving, you know, to, to eat for, for lunch or dinner or whatever. But um, just a really That's cool, so cool. That's kind so of exploration cool. and report. And I, like, it's just one of those things that like when I read it, I was like, man, technology is cool that you could do that. I, that's the stuff that makes me love technology. It's not the tear down of the, like I get excited about that and it's own yeah. thing, but the stuff that actually makes me love technology is this, 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 I mean, just imagine if everything works out and, you know, people are better about, uh, the climate and all of that. And we're here, you know, hundreds of years from now, what we could, what we'd be able potentially to potentially achieve that maybe locked in syndrome would not be a thing anymore, you know? Yeah. Or, or yeah. Or maybe it is a thing, but it does, it's, it it's doesn't not a completely pre, yeah, it's yeah. not, it's not 100% locked away. Like, um, you know, this was uh, just as a reminder, this was just one patient, right? Mm -hmm. This is a one study with one patient. There's a ton of research that still needs to happen here but a lot of really positive outcome on just this one example. Uh, the article does point out that this sort of communication tool uh, could actually give locked in patients agency over their livelihood, like we're talking about, but also could involve their own decisions around euthanasia, which is a hard thing to talk about, uh, import, but important, I think, to consider for someone in that situation. Because I mean, I'm sure that, oh God, could you imagine being locked in that in that no. scenario and having no way to communicate, no agency and just realizing like, you know, like I don't want to do this anymore. Like I, I, yeah. I could put myself in that position yeah. and I, I have to imagine that's I where I would that, yep. be eventually where I'm like this, 100%. I don't know that this is worth it for me. Even something as small as not getting enough eye drops. Like, yes. yeah. Yeah. So this might be a way to give them that, that sort of control over their lives yeah. and everything. So anyways, I thought it was a really cool, cool. Uh, cool study. And uh, I hope that we hear more about that developing over the coming years.